Well, hi, good morning, and thank you for joining me in my shop and keeping me company here. It's August 9th. It's all wet outside because it rained overnight. So uh, My cat's out there, though. The cat has a funny way of staying dry when it's wet outside. We, we don't know exactly how the cat does it, but it doesn't come in all wet. So, yesterday I found a problem with this uh, record player where the automatic function fails to operate properly and what's happening is the record player comes over and just decides to quit right away and that's because the velocity sensor is falling slipping shaking into the wrong position and commanding the the telling the machine that the records over when it's actually just starting or anywhere in its play play uh, play range so don't know how to deal with that to be frank with you I'm gonna set this aside for now though because uh, also found some problems here. And the problems here are very typical of machines like this when they get a little older in life. Some dirt gets in and starts interfering with the mechanical aspect of the of the machine. The mechanical aspect being the, these mechanical buttons, you know, the, these sliders, all this stuff gets dirty and troublesome. So we're going to focus on that and uh, see if we can get the amplifier uh, working properly. taking out the last screws here. See the big uh, cooling uh, thing. <laughs> cooling thing they have here. Cool down the output uh, transistors which I'm sure are mounted just in here. There we go. Not sure what was going on there. Nothing. Nothing was going on. Okay. Top is off. So what we're hoping for is the switches and uh, the controls are accessible in the idea that I can blast some cleaner fluid into them. So these are the switches here, right here. And you can see the obvious way in, but no doubt the shaft is traveling inside here somehow. It's going to be an opening and it's probably not a tight fitting opening. It'll probably get some cleaner down into them some, somehow like that. Okay. Now we're looking for the um, balance controls hidden way under here. We cannot see it. Mm. And worse yet, the uh, tone, tone and the uh, equalizer adjustments are all hidden behind this board here. Now, it, w it was the push buttons that were really bad, I believe, in here. That were really the big problem. I think I just noticed this, this was scratchy, but it wasn't breaking up. It wasn't going dead. So that's a good thing because uh, it looks like these controls are really hard to get out. And, uh, you know, the more I take apart, the more risk I can't get it back together. And check this out. So here's the output transistors. This is what this must be. Mounted on this heavy aluminum plate. Oh no, there they are down below. There they are. Okay, that makes more sense. So that makes a lot more sense. So we get two transistors here and two here. These might be uh, designed to detect uh, too high a temperature uh, on here, and I'm not sure of that. I'm not sure why these are here. Um, the four transistors, uh, two for the left channel, two for the right channel, on this big aluminum plate, which then goes to the fins that are back here to try to keep them cool. So it looks like this is made to deliver a fair a fair chunk of power. Uh, fuses hidden in here that you wouldn't know about. This is this is the no user serviceable parts here. These fuses, um, and there's nothing wrong with them. I'm just pointing out. There's two more fuses down here. There's another fuse here. Remember, no user serviceable parts inside. Did it say that on the back? 
Let's see if they declare that to be the case. Warning. Uh, attention. This is French. Um, oh no, there's English right below. Warning. Shock hazard. Do not open. For use only with Fisher machines. Does not say no user serviceable parts. Okay, just having some fun here. Um, now, what what to clean this? What to clean this guy with? Um, so. Why don't we put the close up? Let's take a close up look at this and see what we can figure out from it now. I think my camera is on autofocus as usual, <coughs> so it may just be a headache using this. So I'm looking for gaps, holes, where I could spray in some cleaner. And I don't see anything really like that on these. So we're gonna have to try to run it in through the uh, through the shaft and hope it gets inside. And we're gonna need gravity to help with that. Fortunately, I brought gravity with me today. So what we do is we would stand this guy up like so. It's really out of balance. And then I would. Spray some fluid right in here, <clears throat> work the switches and try to get the fluid to run down inside here <clears throat> and do its thing. Uh, what fluid? We could we could start with some alcohol. The thing about alcohol is it evaporates away. <clears throat> so if you put a lot in, it's not the end of the world, it's gonna go away anyway. And now I need a delivery. Oh, for crying out loud. I've lost track of my delivery tools. Let me look for them. So I'm often doing this kind of thing with the uh, device running. So you, you can hear you can hear if you're having success. And this is just rubbing alcohol here, isn't it? Isopropyl alcohol. 91%. I guess what's the rest of it? Water? Okay, let's put this here. about alcohol is I don't think it's dangerous you know and I've got I've got some uh, carbon tetrachloride here look at this trichloroethylene ethane trichloroethane um, you know it doesn't even sound safe does it peroxide that's relatively safe but I don't know what I would do with it in here then I have some uh, really ugly stuff, uh, which we would never use for cleaning stuff. But like, uh, uh, that's got to be some kind of acid in here, I would think, or something powerful. Hey, let's just keep going through my chemical supplies. Mm -mm. Methyl hydrate. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Now, did, did we actually fix this thing? No one might have know. So, I think I can turn it. It's got nothing plugged into it to listen to. I gotta check the uh, speaker connections because I tipped this up. They could easily be shorted. We're okay on the speakers. Turn 
this up. You hear the scratching in there. Sometimes you can shoot the fluid right through here and get, you know, that's, that's quite possible. It's quite possible for all these, in fact. What we're trying to hear are crunchy sounds. That kind of stuff. Well, that's quite a hiss. As soon as you click it to phono here, you're engaging, I'm sure you're engaging a preamplifier. And that's not very good. It's making that kind of hiss. Now, the volume's up pretty darn high, like way high. So if we were playing a record, that's all you'd hear is the record. You wouldn't hear any of this hiss. Because you know, normally we're down around here. I'm listening to the sound of the crunch as I move this. It's exactly the same every time. So whatever is in there is uh, stuck in place. So I'm going to turn the power off here because I gained this too much potential for a short circuit here. I'm going to tip this up. And we're going to consider putting a little bit of cleaner down in there. Bit of a long shot. Uh, alcohol is not completely innocuous stuff. It's definitely not, definitely a long shot here. Well, I know it's a short shot. <laughs> it's a shot. While we got it up, I can see there's a plate here I could remove if I care to. So it's definitely done something because the sliding is very different. Let's see. Check the speakers. We're good. Power back on. So the, the crunch is gone, but this is the control is sticky now. Because whatever oily stuff was in there is gone. So what we can do about that is uh, just put a touch of WD-40 in here. Power off again. And the active word is touch. I think something went in there. Smooth again. Smooth as can be. Smooth like baby's feet. Not still a little sticky, but that's okay. That's good. No noise. Now, what about these guys? Let's, let's check these guys out again. Keep us right up. So that's the balance. bit of a hum in this beast. Phono off. No hum. The hum is coming through from the, uh, the phono. Now the, the phono is open circuit here. It's not plugged into something. That might result in some of these hums and stuff that we're hearing. Oh, turn the volume down before you forget or you'll be in for a big surprise. Okay, um, we do the same thing here, only this time I would just use the WD-40. So the power's off. Go for the balance control. It's probably the only one that really needs any cleaning. Speakers, good. Volume up. Hmm. 
Well, normally this control is left in the middle or very near the middle. Get it out near the edge here, it sounds like it's going dead. You know, it's probably I'm just cutting the sound off from a speaker I can hear. The other speaker. There it is. Yeah, that's okay. Very good. What I would do with a unit like this myself is I'd be boosting the bass and boosting the treble. And uh, on the assumption that the speakers are weak in the bass and the treble. They, do not, they, they may not be weak in the treble area. Okay, um, I, think, I think that's it for this. I don't think there's any more I can do with it or need to do with it. It's just a question of making this. See, beautiful. That's. So this one is a little extra noisy, the phono one here. It's a little extra noisy because the receiver's uh, amplification is far greater when you got it in phono. And I'm surprised it didn't all go away. have a way of falling over for me so we're going to try to put a little bit of WD-40 right in there and that's on the hope that it's going in try. That did it. No more noise. Wonderful WD-40, which I know a lot of uh, people doing this kind of work don't want WD-40 near anything. They're against it. I'm not. I've used it for all kinds of stuff. Never really had a problem with myself. Okay, um, that's it for the amplifier. So we're going to go back and take a look at the record player. And we're going to start by examining the needle on the record player. Okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the needle on this one. It just pulls kind of out this way. Ooh, that was not good. <laughs> Got a good grip of it anyway. Looks fine at a long distance. Let's take a look under the microscope here. First we'll look straight down on it and see what we can see here. Okay, I've got the... Looking right at the needle here. It's just a question of focus. Oh boy. Well, you know, top-down view, to me, it looks like the needle is missing. Let's turn it on its side now. Let's see if we can get a look at it sideways, which is really tell the story. Okay. Well, it's there. Just very, very short. Now, Needles, you just have to imagine this being dragged through a groove and where the contact surfaces would be between the needle and the groove. And it would be on the sides of the needle. It's not really the point, it's more the sides. So as the needle wears, the, the sides wear flat. And if we shine light on them, I'm looking for my flashlight here. If we shine light on them, we might see a flat spot. Here's my flashlight. So we're going to try that. 
Now again, we're looking down towards the bottom. Let me put this more in the middle of the screen if I can manage this. Just figure out what to turn here. There we go. There we are. It looks, it looks, I'm looking at the reflection on the conical part of the needle towards the point. And it doesn't look particularly flat to me. And let's see what we can do here. Now, you know what? I can't really shine this on. <laughs> can't really get. You can see me moving the light around, but I'm not shining it on the right angle at all. Well, offhand, I'd say the, you know, the needle's worn, but it's not terrible. Uh, let's see if we can try another approach here. Look straight down on it again. Okay, let me use the stage adjustments here to get it kind of in the middle. Oh, you wouldn't even know there's a, uh, there's a needle there. Try to focus right up high on the top of the needle. Now I'm going to shine that light, shining it from the side as if I'm trying to shine it on the flat spot. Well, it really isn't going to work at all, is it? So back in the day, nobody had a microscope in their repair shop, and magnifiers aren't strong enough. So this technique I'm attempting to do was developed. This was written up. I, I read a report on this. I'll show you with a long distance camera exactly what I'm trying to do here. I am trying to create a flat or f spot a flat spot and I'm not spotting anything at all, really. It's just not working out at all. I'm holding this in my hand. trying to do. You know how it is, everything I, I do is backwards on the screen here. So. Now let me focus it. So there, so you see the, as much as I'm shaking around with it, you can see a straight line reflection going down the conical part right from the point. It's not quite the flat area, but it's really close if there is a flat area. So, you know, so here's the bottom line. There's nothing seriously wrong with this needle. It's there. It's just very short. And uh, it does appear to be worn a little bit when you look at the tip of it. It's not terribly sharp, but the tip is not the part that's critical. What, what I was doing here. So you can see the angle I have, the, uh, I have it on. So you can imagine the flat spots would be on these sides. So I'm taking a light. Attempting to take a light, I'm just pretending here anyway, and shining it at the flat side. The idea is you go like this, and what you should see is, as you can imagine, would be a line rotating around the cone. But if it's flattened off, when you get to a certain point, you'll see a big flat area. And if you really want to get down to it, the flat area. If this were the needle, and this would be a lousy needle, okay, but just pretend this were the needle here, and this is the pointed end. It's 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 wearing where my hands are. This would be the uh, grooves wearing it. Wear, wear, wear. The wear starts small and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and starts to approach the point. So some people would say the needle is worn out when the flat spots reach the point. But you're actually operating a chisel at that point. I've looked at needles from record players and the needle had turned into a chisel. It was it was gone and the end of it was gone and it had been shaped in the shape of the groove, basically. It's still still played, but terrible. So that appears, appears to not be the case with this as much as we tried. Uh, you know, I gave it the college try, I guess you could say. Um, Getting a replacement for this is not too difficult, especially if, if, if you can identify the cartridge, which might be difficult. <laughs> not too difficult, but it might be difficult. Now, our next, so, so we're just going to accept this needle. 
this record player is not exactly your high you know high fidelity may, may even say high fidelity on it. look at that stylus type st090 there's, there's actually a label on here oh my gosh so you don't even have to look in the manual to find out or look on the side of it it's written right there so that would make it easy to find and buy a new needle they're available and uh at least for most record players that are available. Okay, next question is, what about the balance on this thing? When it came here, it had a dime taped to the, to the front of it, like this. So that suggests to me that, that suggested to me, the needle was worn out, it's too dull to sink low into the groove, it's riding high in the grooves, and then that makes it really easy to skip because it's already high up in the grooves. So if it, it bounces the floor or something, it'll jump out of the groove easily because it hasn't got far to go because it's not riding low. Maybe not though. If we're looking on the microscope, yeah, I don't think that makes too much sense. So why did they put a dime on top? A lot of these are adjustable. Uh, the weight is adjustable. This one doesn't have the look that it's adjustable. And I don't remember seeing anything. And look, here's an interesting thing I never realized. I thought Fisher was a Japanese brand with an English name so they could sell their stuff in North America. And uh, Fisher was a Johnny Come Lately uh, during the explosion of electronics coming out of Japan. Maybe not. Fisher, Fisher, 50 year anniversary, 1937 to 1987. So Fisher's been around a long time. I didn't realize that. I really didn't. I'll just add it to the all kinds of things that I think are true that aren't. Okay. We need to weigh this thing and find out what it what its weight is. So I'm going to get a scale. We're going to weigh it. Find out what the tracking force is. That's the official term for this. Okay, if, if you're hearing a bit of a roar, it's the uh, air conditioning in my house going. Now, this is a special scale designed to measure the tracking force in uh, tone arms like this. Whoops, Oops, I want to put this level. There's a, there's a ridge right here. We're going to zero it. force is zero. <laughs> what happened there? It is zero. Okay, we'll try it up here. Two point eight or two point nine grams. And something like this would probably be in the four or five gram range. So it does seem a little light to me. Uh, very, very high quality, like the highest quality cartridges can operate at, I'm not even sure, one and a half grams maybe. This is far from being one of the high quality ones. So I don't think it's heavy enough. And I think putting the dime on, let's put the dime on. We'll just see how much this is probably adding too much to it. I'll just drop it back here. Well, now it's five, five point eight, four point eight. Um, you know what? Maybe the dime was the right thing to do. <laughs> now, is this adjustable? Is this tone arm adjustable? As, um, many of them are. I mean, it looks like it's adjustable back there, kind of, at a glance. Here, have a glance. Um, but somehow, I think not. I don't see anything, you know, usually there's a weight here you can turn or slide or something goes somewhere. Uh, operating instructions. Is, is, so if they can't adjust it, they're not even going to want to talk about it, I think. So connecting the turntable. Turntable operation, identification of parts. They're showing how to pull the needle out, pop the cartridge out with a small screwdriver. 
It's just popped in there. But I don't think we need to do any of that. Notice there's no nothing pointing back here. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is all in the tone arm. 8, cartridge shell, tone arm, lock lever, arm rest, cueing lever. Where's the tone arm uh, tracking adjustment? It doesn't exist. So, <laughs> the dime might have been a better solution. Now, why, why ooh, 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 specifications, rumble speed, platter, platter weight, do you, do you give the uh, grams tracking force? Here we are. Oh, tracking your queuing, cartridge supply, tone arm data, resonance, effective length, shape. Resonance, really? You're gonna you're gonna say that on this? And they don't, but they don't give the tracking force. What one pound? What is the tracking force, Kenneth? So they're keeping that secret. That doesn't seem right, does it? Let's see what it says over here. Turntable skips. Platter does not rotate. No sound. Noise is audible, but there's a marked distortion in the high tonal range. <laughs> Humming sound evident. Speakers howl when the volume is turned up. They aren't going to take us anywhere near the issue of uh, the tone arm tracking force. That's what I think is going to happen here because they know it's a weakness in this device from a selling point of view. Because at some point, they have a big print here. Tone arm tracking force cannot be adjusted. A lot of people would not buy it. They just wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't buy it. They go, oh, you got to adjust that, don't you? So what could happen here is the cartridge could be changed. The new cartridge comes in has a different weight, and that changes the uh, balance of the tone arm and the overall weight. Is that what happened here? No, I don't think so at all. I, I think the original is, is all original. So the skipping thing would either be because the needle is not sharp enough. There is no skipping thing. I'm mistaken. Your, uh, the uh, individuals who put the added weight on thought they were adjusting the tone. Maybe they can make it sound better. We need to play a record here and see about the skipping situation. I do have another scale here, but this scale is just a regular scale. It's not meant for measuring uh, cartridges. And the problem with it is it's fairly thick. When you put it down, it, it's just too, too thick. So this is an actual proper one. You see how thin they made this. So you can have it at the height of the record. It has to be at the height of a record. If it's too high or too low, you don't get the right reading. And if you're really into this, that's important. If you're really into playing records, you're not doing it with this. That's for sure. This, this is not... The thing we don't know about this cartridge just yet is, is it ceramic or is it magnetic? You know, my, my guess is it's ceramic. Hey, let's look in here again, it'll say. It's gonna, it's gonna say in here. It's gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna describe it somewhere. The customer obligations. What? You have obligations. Retain proof you bought it from somebody. Okay, so we're going to look for cartridge. So that would be... Oh my god, it's a senior's moment. I looked at too much stuff and I can't remember what I was doing now. What was I looking for? Jim just getting older all the time. Can't you just stop that? Just stop that getting older thing. Well, I forgot what I was going to look for. They give a tracking error, but they do not give a tracking force. Come on. I'm looking it over again because I can't believe they don't have that in here. There's a color coding chart for the back. I guess this is showing how to put the cartridge back in. But the cartridge is, is working. Okay, we've got to, I don't we've got, we've got to play a record. We're going to play a record. We're going to listen to this with a high quality situation. So you're not going to hear it through speakers. You're going to hear it direct into the sound system. We're going to hear what this really sounds like.
that's a good idea. Okay, I think we're ready to go here. Um, let's try a micro groove record. Huh? Yeah, every every modern record is a micro groove record, as compared to records from the 40s or 30s or whenever it was or earlier. The grooves were much wider, the needles were bigger, and the record speed was faster. It was 78. One song aside. Okay. Um, now this thing may not want to play because of the the uh, re reject problem or the velocity sensor problem inside it. So let's just see what we can get away with here. Um, first, uh, power everything up. Okay. Do do it. Can't remember. We have to turn this on. Probably. Yes. Now volumes down. There's no speakers plugged in here. The turntable's not plugged in here. This is just supplying 16 volts to run the motor over here. That's all we got happening there. The sound, in fact, is coming out on, on its cable. Here's its cable here, right here. Connected to another cable, which is then running over to my oh so fancy studio sound system. That's this thing here. So uh, I have to put headphones on. I don't normally wear headphones in here. I, so, there, okay, so I have my headphones on. These are microphones. You couldn't hear me there. And this is the record player. Let me turn the microphones off, turn up the record player, just to hear what it sounds like with nothing happening. This, get rid of the background noise. I started talking there with the <laughs> microphones down. Okay, that's the situation over there. Is there enough amplification to play a record? I think there is, and if there is, that indicates this. Oh, that's what I was going to look for. Ceramic. Is it a ceramic cartridge? Yes. <laughs> I just remembered. What did I do with all the uh, documentation? Let's just take a quick look. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a ceramic cartridge here. Let's see what I can find out about it. I think right in the front it might say somewhere. Unpacking, connecting. Symptoms, specifications. I went down this list already. Cartridge supply. Stereo magnetic. Oh my gosh, I'm surprised. So magnetic cartridge. So that means the tracking force should be pretty light. And you know, it's right in the range of reasonableness with uh, a magnetic cartridge. So why the dime on top? Let's see if we can find out. Now there's a good chance again the because of the mechanical situation here, it's just going to want to reject. Oh, we got to turn it on. No, we don't turn it on. No, that's the reject button. There is no on. The on is this. Oh, yeah. So we learned a trick. I'm going to try to apply the trick. We'll see if it works. Uh, and that was to, to do this. started turning. I shook this right out. Seems to have worked though. Okay, the volume is turned right down so we shouldn't hear anything. I'm just going to put this on anywhere on the record here. Anything you hear is just coming through microphones. So I'm going to turn off the microphones and turn up the sound.
Okay, so if you notice the bass got better, it's because I turned it up on my uh, soundboard over here. Uh, so it's, there's a bass boost going on now. Well, you know, to me, it sounds perfectly fine. I did have to ramp the boot, the uh, bass up uh, on my soundboard over there. Uh, the trouble is, is in the neutral position or halfway. So lots of trouble. Uh, to me, the sound is fine. I don't see what the need is. You know, what? I know what we need to do. We, we need to do the bounce test here. Now, I'm on a concrete basement floor, so jumping on the floor isn't going to do it. We'll start this playing again. That's not very good. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine that mechanism going back and forth under there. It, it's it's definitely putting a drag on this. It's that's the cheapness. So I'm gonna pretend I'm gonna do this, and we'll see if the if it skips. Microphones are up. <laughs> Standing here keeping my mouth shut because I don't think the microphones were on. They were on. So this appears to be working now, but I mean, how long is it going to keep before it starts acting up again? But we know the, the rough solution to this problem, and you saw me do it. Tip this up, bang it, causes the velocity sensor to slip back uh, a little bit, so it seemed. I got away with it. And here, here we are actually working properly now occasionally what happens with these guys is that because they haven't been exercised for a long time they start doing clunky things and as you you work them parts get a little 
you know, back to their normal situation. The lubrication gets a little looser and that kind of stuff. Maybe that's what's happened here. Maybe I'm talking too soon. No. Well, we're getting away with it right now, playing record after record and letting it go back. But in terms of this being fixed, I kind of doubt it. Try it one more time. Yeah, it's working. It's working just fine now. We're going to check the turntable speed next and uh, see if it's uh, correct. Now, I'm not sure if what you're seeing is what I'm seeing. Now, normally, you, you, you need to do these under a stroboscopic light that's flashing at 60 cycles a second. Usually a neon light is the way you do it. And a lot of these turntables, they have this kind of built into it and they have that neon light built into it. And you can look maybe down here and see if you're going too fast or too slow. So this one, this, this part on top here, the stroboscopic disc number 30 to 30. 33 and a third, 78. 16, wow, who's got, a, I've, I've got a record that plays at 16, but I don't have a record player to play it on. The record is gigantic, 45 RPM. Audio text, we will read plus four, plus two, right on, minus two, minus four. So that's how this works plus four, plus two, right on, minus two, minus four. So you want to get this broad part frozen under a 60 cycle light. Now it turns out the uh, LED lights I have are have enough strobing in them to make this thing work. Plus the camera, the camera's gonna do stuff. So what you see, I'm not sure. And I look, let's say, right at the 33, which is right here, okay, to me, you know what? You're seeing exactly what I'm seeing. This is sliding backwards slightly. Now, we kind of do this with the uh, cartridge on. If you want to do an interesting experiment yourself and you're doing this kind of stuff, get a record player, get the record spinning, get a cartridge, hold it in your hand. Okay, do this very carefully. You become the tone arm. Place the cartridge, this is tricky to do, onto the uh, record so the needle goes in the groove and feel the pull. That's the whole thing. Feel the pull on that needle and cartridge in the groove. You'll be surprised. I guarantee you, you'll be surprised. So drop this on here. The reason being, it's going to slow this down. So if we're to slow this down. If you look at this this line, let me point with my special pointer. This line is almost standing still, right here. I'm going to put the needle on. It should slow it down a bit. Let's see what happens here. almost dead on. Now what was happening? I lift it up. Made just the tiniest difference if you can eat it. Maybe I'm just imagining it too. Let me just look at this whole thing here. Isn't that weird? That's really weird to look at. I don't think there's any difference myself. But in a weak record player, uh, when the needle goes down, the platter slows. This one seems really good though. Okay, it is a little bit slow, and there are speed... Are there any speed adjustments? I did this thinking there were speed adjustments on the front here. So there may be speed adjustments up from the bottom or some other way, but believe me, this speed is pretty darn accurate. I mean, it's close enough. It, music sounded just fine to me. I didn't think my buddies were playing too fast. We'll put this on the 45 side. We'll flip this to 45. We'll get her going again. So now we're looking the 40, the 45. Well, the one that stopped would be this one right here. This is the 45. It's dead on. It's, it's right on. Play the record here a little bit. Again, don't see any speed change whatsoever. Okay, another thing we can do to check the uh, traction uh, strength in basically the belt in this turntable, it's basically a belt. You put your finger, maybe not on the record, but on the platter, 
and apply drag and to see how much you can you can apply so you can you can hear the motor trying as soon as I touch this so there's lots of power here uh, in a uh, regular rim drive like an older rim drive record player often the drive is very weak and if you touch your finger even if it's traveling at the right speed you touch your finger here and you just bring it right to a stop right away and that's not because the motor's stopping it's because of slippage in the uh, transmission chain if you like of, of stuff so this guy's speed is fine I don't see an adjustment anyway I thought I thought I saw something down here to twiddle with but there's nothing but its speed is certainly fine and uh, sounded uh, fine I didn't hear any wow or any flutter in it when it was playing so I don't think I think that's the the only option here to stop the weirdness from happening and the weirdness is when it refuses to play a record would be to go in and take that velocity sensor and disable it somehow so it cannot uh, trigger the the he cannot get stuck in the trigger position or something like that the problem with that is that this tone arm is linked as you know underneath here to a pusher that pushes right on this piece and if you were to for instance glue the piece down so it doesn't go into the into the automatic mode just glue it down and then the record player becomes a manual record player from that on. it's half manual anyway right the only way the needle gets on the record is because you put it there right this guy's behaving really well what happens if you do it at 45 Get a little quicker Oh, started right back up. It's a new problem. Oh my gosh, look at that. So I think what's happening now is the platter's moving at a speed high enough that when the record player turns off, it has enough momentum to go far enough to trigger the whole thing back on again. A little surprised at that. that that's an unexpected thing. <laughs> so this is bad. Let's put the speed down to 40. 33 and we'll see if uh, if that problem goes away Ooh, I think this came right up to the edge of starting it again let's advance it a bit yep Oh yeah, it, it just rolls right up to the point where it's ready to push the trigger. It hasn't got enough momentum to push it. So there's a hidden problem here on 33. You can't see this effect. Now again, this comes back to that automatic feature. If we, if we eliminate the automatic feature, then when the record's over, the needle will just sit in here and foot them, foot them, foot them until somebody comes over and fixes it. Now, it, it what would happen back in the day is that people put a record on, fall asleep for them, for them, for them for an hour or something like that. That's why they automatically come over and shut themselves off. Uh, or you play a record you forget. Uh, I, I do this myself these days because I have manual. I have a manual turntable, and I play the uh, song and it gets to the end. And the song stops, and you know I'm not paying attention. The next thing you know, an hour and a half's gone by, and I realize, oh, that record's still spinning with the. Uh, needle on it now there's nothing going on in these grooves they're very straight so the amount of wear on the needle is extremely low so you can let it sit here for a long long time and how long does a needle last anyway well the word on the street is about a thousand sides so if you play a thousand of these the needle probably needs to be changed and should should the needle be changed on this one yeah I, I would say I say if your intention is to play a lot of records why not it's easy to get this needle. Look, the number's right here. There's places on the internet that sell these things. They come in the mail, pop it in. There you go, new needle. Um, chances of not being able to do that is very low. Okay, uh, is that it? I think. They, yeah, well, I think we have to find out what the uh, owner of this would like to have done to his record player in terms of disabling the automatic function. I think that's where we are now. Okay, that's great for now. I'm just going to call it quits for today and post this video. And uh, and what am I going to do? It's rainy today. Oh, I'll go play with radios. Yeah.
I do that a lot, you know. See ya.